I'm going to talk about pointers. Um, the reason why I'm talking about pointers is it seems to be a, a point of confusion, pardon the pun, for beginner coders. But um, pointers aren't really that difficult to use or understand. I might actually have more trouble trying to explain them than to actually use them. But simply, they are just another variable. Um, <clears throat> they're stored in RAM just like any variable. They hold a certain amount of data and you can do stuff with them like add to them or subtract from them. You can do any arithmetic operation or logic operation. They work just the same way as any other variable, but they have a special feature which I'll get into. And what the data they hold is just an address, another address of another variable. That's usually how they work. So if we were to look at what uh, memory looks like, this could say this is a sample of RAM in the AT Mega 328. And each one of these represents uh, a byte. It's like, um, and each byte has an address starting at, in this case, for the internal SRAM for the AT Mega 328, it starts at one, 100 hex. But um, each one of these is a byte, and they, they're kind of like a mailbox, kind of like these. Each mailbox box has a separate number on it that differentiates them from all the others, and each mailbox can only hold a certain amount of information. You can stuff only so many letters into a mailbox. Uh, same with RAM. Each one is a byte, so there's 8 bits, so that um, allows you to store 200 and a number of, ranging from 0 to 255. Now, um, when you um, declare variables in your program, in your C program, the compiler will assign an address to, or actually, it will assign an address to that um, variable, but it also sets aside the appropriate amount of memory for that variable. So if you're um, declaring a byte or a car, it's one byte. Uh, if it's an int or an unsigned int 16 underscore t, um, that's two bytes, 16 bits. Um, a long or a long integer is four bytes, a float or a double, those are also four bytes each. Um, and then a pointer is just uh, in this case, two bytes, because it takes two bytes to store an address to address the, all the 200 and, or 2048 bytes of uh, RAM in the AT Mega 328. And um, microcontrollers with more RAM, possibly you might need a bigger, um, ad, uh, a more space to store the address. Now, what a pointer does, again, it's just another. Um, section of the memory that's been put aside by the compiler and it's been given an address just like any of the other variables um, but it's what it contains is an address of another variable and uh, it would look like this so your compiler you've declared a variable one and your compiler has decided to put it in here say it's address uh, one two one two three hex and then uh, you've declared a pointer as, as well in your software and the compiler has decided to put the pointer down here somewhere at 256. And then when you initialize the pointer, you can take the address of variable 1 and put it into the pointer. And now the pointer points to that variable. Um, it's really just that simple. But I think the confusion comes in in the, um, the, the, the notation used in when you're writing your code and the use of the asterisk um, for declaring um, pointers. So let's look at some code that I've written. And this code is very simple. It uh, uh, just um, uses a couple of pointers to do something very simple. Basically uh, what it's going to do is swap two numbers from one to the other. Um, I've written a function called swap. This is just a prototype because I wrote um, swap down here below main and which is here and it gets used in main and uh, the compiler would complain if you started to use it without this uh, function prototype that's why I put it there I could actually put the um, declaration of that function up here would work just as well the next thing I've declared here is um, a string which is just a, an array of 10 car car is just a byte an ASCII character basically um, this is just going to hold um, an ASCII string that gets put out to the serial terminal. I'm using uh, the serial terminal here 
in order to be able to see what's going on in this program when it's running. I'll output um, some messages to the serial terminal that tells you what's going on. Here are the uh, two variables that I've declared. They're both of type int. Um, An int uh, in this compiler is two bytes long, so the compiler will not only assign an address to variable one and variable two, but it'll also allow them, each of them, two bytes of space in RAM. The next thing I've done here is I've declared a pointer, and I've called it variable underscore p, which the p just stands for pointer. Pointer to a variable. And what differentiates this from being a normal variable is the asterisk here. When you declare it with int asterisk and then the name, that tells the compiler that you're declaring a, um, a pointer. And you have to tell the compiler what, it, what variable type uh, or data type it's pointing to. In this case, it's an int. And that, the reason for that is so that the compiler can handle the incrementing and the decrementing, for example, if you do anything like that with the pointer, so it can handle it correctly. Um, the actual space that it occupies in RAM will be two bytes. Even if it was pointing to something that's four bytes long, like float, um, the pointer is to a float. So if I instead had written float here instead of int, then um, this was a pointer to a float, but the amount of space that this variable, the pointer, occupies in RAM is still two bytes because it only takes two bytes to create an address. Um, now, what's next here? Here's the main function. I just initialized the UART so I can send data to the serial terminal. And most of the code in here is just sending data out to the serial terminal. The actual um, code that's being executed by the, the function here to demonstrate this is, uh, well, here, those two statements, a call to swap here, um, another statement here, and then another call to swap, and that's it. There's really only, what is it, four here? Five statements altogether that actually run the program. The rest of them are just um, formatting the variables so that we can display them on the uh, serial terminal. So back to the program. What I've done here with variable one and variable two, I've just assigned these values to each of the variables. So if we could look into the RAM, like with a microscope or something like that, and find where variable one and variable two were, we could look at the data and see that 1, 2, 3, 4 is stored where variable 1 is located and 5, 6, 7, 8 is stored where variable 2 is located. Um, some more uh, outputting to the serial terminal. Now what I'm doing here with swap, I'm calling swap with two uh, parameters, variable 1 and variable 2. And what this ampersand here means is um, we're, what we're doing to this with this function here is passing the address of variable one and variable two, and that's what the ampersand means. It basically means the address of. Um, and then let's go down. I'll just keep going with this. This statement here. So I've taken the pointer, and what I've done is I've I'm putting something into the RAM where pointer is. I'm putting the address of variable one into the variable pointer. So if we were to take the microscope again and look at the location where variable pointer is located, we would see the address of variable one. And I call swap one more time. This time I'm using the variable pointer as one of the parameters and the address of variable two. Now remember variable p points now to variable one and so it passes the address. The contents of variable p is the address of variable one, so it gets passed to the parameter swap or to the function swap. And then a bunch more uh, outputting stuff to the serial terminal. Let's have a look at swap and see how it works. So in a declaration for the function swap, I've declared two more pointers here. Both of them are pointers to ints. And then internally to the uh, function, I've got a local variable temp, which is also an integer. And what I'm doing is, in the first case here is I'm using the pointer first, which has been given an address when I called swap. And then what I'm using here is this asterisk next to the pointer means give me the, the value in the location that's pointed to by first not the value of first, 
but the value of the location that's pointed to by first. So it's basically taking the uh, variable and copying it into temp. The next statement here is I'm taking, again, because I've got the asterisk in front of the pointer, I'm saying taking the contents of the address pointed to by the pointer and putting it into the address pointed to this pointer here. And so um, I've taken the first value, put it in a temporary storage, taken the second value, put it into the first value, and then here I've taken what I've temporarily stored and put it back into the second value. And that's how you get the swap. So that's essentially how pointers work. Um, let's go back to this statement here again. So you see here I'm using variable p without the asterisk. So again, uh, what I'm meaning here is I'm taking the address of this variable and putting it into the variable pointer. So into the actual memory location where this pointer or where this variable is located is getting the address of variable one. Let's look at the output here. I'll scroll back up to the top and we can see what actually is going on. So I've run the program and this is what it spits out. So at the very beginning of the program where I have done nothing to the variables, um, I'm just outputting the address of variable 1 and variable 2. And again, I use this little ampersand here that says, um, give me the address of variable 1. I just convert it to an integer so that this function i2a stands for int2 ASCII. So it converts the value of the address into a little string and puts it in temp string. Um, this part of the function 16 is called the radix. So I'm using base 16. So it's going to output the value of the address of variable 1 in hex rather than in decimal. And I do the same with variable 2. So when we look at the output, we see the address 229 and 235 for variable 1 and variable 2. This is where the compiler has decided to put them. The next statement here, I'm doing the same thing to the pointer variable underscore p. What is the address? Of, where is that variable stored? And we see here it's stored in address 227. Now, the next thing I do um, before swap, oh, first of all, I've assigned um, variable one and two. I've given them values now. And so um, I'm now going to output what the contents of those variables are. So before swap, which is here, Variable 1 has the value of 1, 2, 3, 4. Variable 2 has 5, 6, 7, 8, just the way I had done it here in the program. So that's what that statement does. I call swap, and then I output um, the same thing with the variables, 1 and 2, um, after the swap, and we'll see what happens here. So before swap is just after I assign these values to variable 1 and 2. Ran swap, and now look, we have switched the contents of these two variables around. The next statement here is where I'm assigning a value to the variable pointer, variable p, which is going to be the address of variable 1. And then here, this set of statements outputs that address onto the terminal. And then at the same time, I'm going to look at what the contents of that location that are being pointed to by that they're at a pointer. <clears throat> so here, I'm taking variable p, but you notice that I've put the asterisk in front of it. Let's go back one. So what I've done here is I, um, I want to take the, I want to find the contents of the variable p. So I'm treating it like an any, any, the contents of this pointer, variable p. So I'm treating it just like an ordinary variable, and I'm looking at the contents of the variable itself, the pointer converting it to an integer and outputting it to the screen, outputting it to the terminal. And then here, I'm wanting to look at the contents of the address that the variable is actually pointing to. And so I have to put this little asterisk in front of it that tells the compiler that I want to see the contents or I want to do something with the contents of the address that's being pointed to by variable underscore p. So looking at it here, contents of variable p, p I shouldn't have put the star in here actually. But anyways, what is stored in the location 227, where variable p is, where the pointer is, is 
the address of variable one because I assigned it up here. And look at that, we've got 229 in there, which is the address of variable one. Now on the, the contents of the location that that pointer points to, which it's pointing to the location or the contents of variable one, which is 5678. And you can see that it's now 5678 because it, it's after the swap. And then I do another swap with variable P as being as providing the address to the function swap. And then, which is the same as putting variable one, the address of variable one in here does the same thing. A run swap that way, and then I check the contents of the variables again, and you see that they've been swapped back again. So that's um, basically how this program works. It will be available on my GitHub site. You can download it and play with it. Um, I would make a copy of it and then get rid of all of this stuff here and then so you can just see the program itself to see how it runs and then if you want to duplicate what I've done here then you put all this stuff back again um, but yeah download it play with it and, and try to write some software using it and maybe go online Google pointers in C and see what comes up and maybe you'll get some other explanations that might be clearer than mine but believe me it was a lot harder for me to explain how this works than to actually do it. So just get out there and do it. So let's summarize what we've done here. So a regular variable declaration, we have to declare the type, the variable type that these are going to be, variable one and variable two. And then I declare a pointer. The pointer declaration uses the asterisk. You can, you can see how similar they are, except the only difference is this asterisk. And what that means to the compiler is now I'm making this a pointer instead of a variable. Although it is a variable, but it contains a special value, which is an address. And you have to tell it that you're pointing to integers. So if I want to access the contents of the pointer, um, treat it like a variable, then you just do it the way you normally do with any kind of variable. It, there's no asterisk here and so what I'm doing is getting the address of variable one and putting it into the contents of the pointer. If I want to add, access the contents of the address that the variable is uh, that the pointer is pointing to then I put the little star in front the asterisk in front so it means give me the contents of the address pointed to by this pointer which will give you one two three four which was variable one. So that was a quick video on pointers. Uh, I wanted to get this thing out and I wanted to do it in one take so I don't have to uh, do too much editing. Um, if you uh, got any out of this video, if you liked it, thumbs up. That would be great. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Um, I know I've been a bit lax on putting out videos, but I'm kind of busy lately. But I've got a few more in the works and hopefully in the next couple of weeks I'll put out some more videos. So I uh, appreciate your attention. Thanks for watching.